Hey everybody, Dr. O here. I'm actually going to walk you through the microscope all the way from scanning power to the oil immersion system. And I'm going to show you the parts of the microscope as we go, as well as what you're seeing through the ocular inside the microscope. So let's go ahead and get to it. I decided to choose a blood smear. So we're looking at a blood smear here. Another microscope. This is with the scanning power, which has a 4x objective. But the oculars up here, the eyepiece has a 10x objective. These can be 20 or 25, but you multiply the two together. So right now we're looking at a total magnification of 40x. Not very much when you consider how small a red blood cell is. So 4x magnification here times 10 in the ocular. Um, I'm actually going to take it out of focus. Cause I'm going to take you all the way from the beginning when I first put the, the slide on the stage here. So I'm going to... First thing, when you, put, when you put the slide on, you want to make sure that it slides right into this little lobster claw here. And then you move using these two knobs here, the top knob moving the uh, slide forward and backward, bottom knob side to side. Then you're going to put the image right over your light source. Now, the first major tip I can give you is to move the stage all the way to the top. You want to start here. And there's two reasons for that. Number one is students are often um, having trouble finding something on the microscope. And I can see from across the room that they're never going to see it because their stage is way too far away. And number two, as long as you start at the top and work your way down, you're not going to break your slides. So that's uh, the first tip I could give you. So what I did there is I got it in focus using this here, the course adjustment knob. It's how, it's how you move it large distances, as you can see here. Sorry for the psychedelics there. But then, now that I have it where I think it's in focus, the key here with this, with what's called a parfocal microscope, especially where the objectives are linked together, the key is to make sure it's as close to 100% in focus as possible. So I will actually, I call it the Goldilocks uh, strategy. I will actually purposely take it, so I think it's in focus going in one direction. I'll purposely go too far, take it out of focus, and then I'll go back. And the reason I do that is because if it's only 90% in focus, it'll probably look pretty good at this lower uh, magnification. But as we move up, I'll be farther and farther away from actually having it in focus. Okay, so once I think I have it in focus, the next thing to do before you move on is to find what you want to look at, which really we're just looking at a sea of red blood cells at this point but you want to find a part of the slide that you think is interesting. Not much to look at here, but if you find something you definitely want to see, you want to center it. And that's because right now we're looking through a 40X magnification. As I go to the next power, which I will now, the 10X magnification, a low power, the magnification has jumped from 40X to 100. So that means the magnification went up two and a half times, which means the field of view, which you can actually see, has gotten two and a half times smaller. So something looks really interesting on the right-hand side of the field of view inside the microscope. When I go to the next power, I'm not going to see it anymore. It's somewhere off to the side here. So, all right. Uh, so same thing. I get it where I think it's in focus. I use my Goldilocks strategy to purposely take it too far out of focus both directions. And that's why I do so. I kind of like the eye doctor. Like, is this better or this better? Well, they both look pretty good, right where I have it here, and then just a little bit of difference. But uh, if you get it super crisp, you're going to thank yourself later. All right, so the low power, I now have it in focus. We're not really looking at anything yet. We're just getting to the point where we can visualize structures. But what you are looking at here, just real quickly, this is, you know, your blood is 99.9% .9 red blood cells. So you're looking at a sea of red blood cells here. Those little purple structures you see throughout, those are going to be your white blood cells. But we'll see them in more detail as we progress. Now we're going to head to the high dry power. This the high dry power is called that because it's the highest magnification you can get without using immersion oil, which we'll use when we get to the oil immersion objective. The high dry power has a magnification of 40x. So you take that times the 10x magnification that's uh, in the ocular, and we're now looking at a total magnification of 400x. Now you may have noticed that I had to turn the light intensity up a little bit there. So this is the rheostat knob where you do that. And that, as you as you go up in magnification, think of it this way: you're basically using less of the light bulb, so it does get darker. So that's why I turned up the light intensity a little bit using the rheostat knob. Now we're starting to have some structures that I want to center. That I really want to get a, get a good look at here. So. I'll actually just annotate in the video which types of white blood cells we're looking at, but I have it in focus as good as I can get it. So what I'm going to do now is just scan around a little bit and let you see what some of these white blood cells look like here at this high dry power. So I'm just, I'm just scanning around. I'll kind of highlight things that you're seeing. But we're actually going to move on then to the oil immersion lens system. 
So I've done other videos on oil immersion. I've done other videos on why we need oil for oil immersion, but now let's just go ahead and do it. So the key here with oil immersion is we have to put immersion oil right on the slide. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this half a turn, so it's gonna look black there on the screen as I grab my immersion oil. Immersion oil works because it has the same refractive index as glass. So I'm gonna put a single drop of immersion oil right there on the slide, and then I'm going to slowly move the objective into place. And what should actually happen is the glass with the immersion oil on it should now be touching the oil immersion objective. And now I just jumped up from 400 times magnification to 1,000. But notice how that it's almost perfectly in focus. And the key there is I did my work moving forward, like I talked about in other videos. And I made sure it was as focused as it could be at the high dry power. And that made my life a whole lot easier as I moved forward. So I'm just going to tweak this a little bit. Just going to scan around, try to find a couple things more interesting. But mainly we're just seeing these red blood cells here. Here's a handful of white blood cells. There's a platelet there. I'll, I'll highlight that in the video. And that is how you use the microscope. So now that I'm done again, stage all the way down and I'll complete my cleanup. I'll turn the rheostat knob down, turn the power off. And there we go. I have some cleanup to do, but that is how you use a microscope from start to finish. This should be the definitive guide for how to use the microscope in the lab. Have a wonderful day. Go change the world.